Daring to set boundaries. We've been talking about this for a few months now, and I'm offering you an opportunity to spend just 30 minutes to clear your energy box and to energize your boundaries. So if you've had your lunch, sit back, relax, take a breath. If you're catching this on replay, you're in for a treat because not only are we going into a little bit of the thoughts about boundaries, but also how to be better, how to be stronger in our lives and in ourselves so that we can have those boundaries and they can work really well for us. So let's get started. Today, we're just going to make a start. And I'm going to share some insights and then we're going to spend most of the time clearing our energy blocks and we're going to do that with just our hands it's amazing and then we'll just wrap things up so you can get back to your day boundaries it, it's something where it's kind of a buzzword these days and do we really know what they are do we really know how they affect our lives do we know how to maintain them? Do we know how to sense when we're not being served? I've been doing a lot of reading, a lot of talking to people, and just exploring it. And one of the key readings that I have been delving into, it's very interesting, is Terry Cole's Boundary Boss book. And the whole point is to move from being stuck where you don't want to be into having freedom to be seen and to be honest and to interact with people. And one of the core quotes that really resonated with me was that it's not this esoterical thing, but it's more personal and personal boundaries. We can't see them. We don't have a sign across us that says, this is my boundary, go no further, or we don't wear certain clothes or whatever. These personal boundaries are invisible. And because of that, we have to establish them with our words, and often more than once, and our actions. So how are we showing up? How are we working with other people? How are we having relationships? Are we in a case where we are being clear and we're communicating that not only with our words, but our actions? Now, Brene Brown, another big figure in having relationships that are healthy and having good boundaries. I love her book, Dare to Lead. And the big question is, how do you want to show up in your life? And I love her value of living big, where you have your boundaries intact and good boundaries that are healthy. You live with integrity and you live with generosity. I highly recommend it, delving into this book and you can get it in hard copy or on the Kindle, which I found really useful. And then the other thing that um, we really need to think about with our boundaries, and uh, Tiffany picked up on this, and so did Marie and the other people I've been talking to, boundaries don't just happen. They're something where we develop them, and they can be of many different ways. We can have rigid boundaries where we isolate ourselves and nothing gets through. But those aren't very useful because we end up lonely, isolated, 
and we can't get things done as well as we'd like. It also means that when we're in a team, we aren't as effective because working together makes such a difference and putting five heads together is so much better than just one. Another type of boundaries that is less than optimum is porous boundaries. When we don't have a clear vision of what our boundaries are, when we don't have a clear vision of what is acceptable and what isn't, and even more so when other people can't discern from us what the boundaries are. So this means that anything can come through, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the things that don't serve. And I think that's where we often end up in the most difficult situations because we don't have a lot of quality control on our interactions. So putting the work in on your boundaries is so important. And when we do that and we have healthy boundaries, it allows for good experiences because everybody is clear, everybody can interact and not step on each other's toes and everything. So having the good healthy boundaries is so worth it. And I'm so glad that you've joined me uh, in this exploration. But the core of the boundaries, it all comes back to who we are. Often when we have interactions with other people and they're suboptimal, we might think that it's just how we're interacting with that person or it's them, it's not us, or we just don't get on with them. But when we have more coherence in ourselves, more clarity and more inner strength that's flexible, it allows us to be aligned. So if we're authentic, that is where we're striving for. Because as Carolyn Street says, trying to do, be, or have what is not aligned with you, it's to be avoided. I love it. She's very straight talking and very clear and very true. So as we go down the garden path in our lives and in our work, we may end up with situations where we weren't quite expecting it or we don't have the skills to cope with it. And often we can end up in situations where we're falling a bit short because we don't have the inner strength. We don't have the inner clarity. We don't have the inner connection with who we are, what we need, and how things are for us. So I invite you to stop for a few minutes and not just look around at the garden path or your current situation, but to turn inwards and to connect with your energy and to experience how it can be and also how it is right now. I haven't met a single person who has complete harmony and alignment and um, fulfillment at all times in the day. It varies. So, Take a few moments and just play. And we'll use our hands for this. When we have tensions in our body, tensions in our psyche, tensions in our emotions, they can disrupt our functioning. And they can disrupt how the energy is flowing in our bodies and how we resource ourselves. If you think about it's a bright sunny day and you're standing at the edge of a building and you'd really like to take in all the sunshine of the spirit. But there's a bit of an issue because there's a huge overhang and there's big walls put up and there's blocks from you experiencing the warm sunlight and the energy from the universe. So the same thing happens within us. When we have congestion or blocks, 
within our energy due to external circumstances or our thoughts or things that we've brought along in our life, then we can have less flow in our body and be less well and less resourced to show up and to be there for other people. So I have this little infographic. I've tailored it specifically for you for today because we have gifts in our hands and the energetic pathways that run through our bodies to function all are related to our hands. So we'll be going through each of the fingers and the palm to help you ease any stresses, ease any tensions, and to strengthen your internal self. And that allows you to strengthen your boundaries and to have more effective boundaries as well. Now, I'd love to tell you that just holding your fingers will solve everything. It supports you. It gives you a start but we still have to do all the work in our lives. That's why I presented some of the resources that I've been working with over the last few months. So let's start with our thumb. People go like this to say it's all good. Well, if we hold our thumb and you can hold it gently, you don't have to press or rub. You don't have to hold it in a certain position. You don't have to hold it up by your face. You can put it in your lap. And it doesn't matter if you're holding your left or right. It's probably good to hold the left for a few minutes and the right for a few minutes. Generally, what I start my day with is to spend 36 conscious inhalations and exhalations because that gives me a good way to work through some of the tensions. And it also is a complete circle energetically. So I won't be counting today because we're just gonna illustrate some of the benefits of holding our hands. When you're holding your thumb, that has to do with our container, our skin, the physical boundaries that we have with people, and it strengthens our interface with others. So it strengthens how we interact. And it gives us that added little bit of protection, kind of like if you're having a um, important meeting and you're putting on your best suit and your best makeup and your hair is done and the shoes and the nails and all that, just as a bit of protection or armor and to feel your best and to look your best, holding our thumb can do the same thing. It has the added benefit of easing our worries. Some people say it turns worries into wonder. And as another benefit, I don't know about you, but if I'm ever worried and tense, my digestion gets a bit off. So by holding our thumb, it helps to facilitate our digestion. And as our body has our skin as the outside container, holding our thumb helps with our skin conditions. So if you hold your thumb just for a few minutes each day and breathe and relax, you'll reap the benefits. (coughs) Excuse me, goodness. Moving on to our index finger. Our index finger helps us to flow. If we're not in flow, we get stuck. And it means that we can't interact as well with ourselves, our intentions, and with others. Well, our index finger and the energetic pathways that go through us, it help us to flow through life. And a big part of that is that it helps to ease our fears. <coughs> Excuse me. When we're in fear, we're not interacting the same way. We're not having the same connections. And often we can't really hear what people are saying because we're too frozen down and in fight or flight mode. And 
nothing gets in when we're very scared. And because of that, holding our index finger also helps to release stress and tension. If you ever have a very tense situation and you have a lot of fears, just gently hold your index finger. Take a breath, drop your shoulders. And actually you can just receive the breath and release it. They always come. So holding our index finger helps us to be in the flow of life and in the flow of whatever we want to do, whether it's work or personal or a bit of fun too. We can also support ourselves by holding our middle finger. The energies that go through our middle finger are expansive about growth and renewal and creativity. And it can help us to be more proactive in our lives. Now, when we're not being expansive, when we're not expressing or exploring our creativity, we can be very frustrated. And this means that we may have anger. So if the energies that run through your middle finger are in disharmony, then you may be frustrated and have anger. If you're having a situation where you just are up to here and can't see any way through it, try holding your middle finger. Take a break and regroup. These energies also are amazing because not only do they help us to expand, they help us to see things physically and metaphysically. So we can be inspired and to explore that creativity and to go out into the things that we're trying to do. So we're halfway there. We've gone through the first three digits, but we still have three more. And I invite you to just check in with yourself. Do you notice any tension? Do you notice a bit of a shift? Sometimes people do. Sometimes people don't. I know when I first experienced Jin Chin Jitsu, which is what all this finger holding is, I knew that it helped me. I could sense a change, but I didn't have an awareness of minute changes. So if you can sense that, wonderful. And we'll move on to our ring finger. And our ring finger helps us to let go. If we're hanging on to things that don't serve us, it can leave us more stuck and it can limit our ability to work with our boundaries and to achieve our goals in life. It's one of those things where if we don't let go of what we're hanging on to, we can have sadness. But if we can let things go and move forward in our life. We can breathe more freely. We can take things in. We can feel the benefits. And as we feel the benefits, we can see the beauty in life. So by letting go, we have space to take in the new things. And the whole time here, I've been holding my left finger, so I'm going to switch to my right because our left hand has more to do with the past and our right hand has more to do with the present. So by holding your ring finger, it'll help shift and help to move into new areas. I think we all could use a little bit of that. And then don't forget your little finger. Our little finger helps us to show up, helps us to not be in a case where we're just trying to do things, where we're pretending that everything's okay, where we're tied up in knots on the inside, 
but smiling on the outside. Sometimes people say crying on the inside and laughing on the outside. But when we're not aligned and when we're not authentic, our energies get blocked and twisted and congested. And it takes a lot of effort to do that. So if we can ease those energies and support ourselves with those energies, it can ease our efforts. One of the things that is most beneficial on a physical level is that when we have a lot of efforting, a lot of pretense, it can stress our heart and our joints. And then we're less able to show up. So those two things can have a knock-on effect where we're struggling with things and we're, we're striving to do things. And then we have physical implications on top of that. So by having these energies in good nick, it can make all the difference. The other thing that's a little more interesting that I'm still exploring is that having these energies in harmony helps us to have more tolerance. And this is something where I understand it on a level and I've experienced it but I'm still exploring it. So I'll have to get back to you more on that. And if you have any insights, I'd love to hear them. Now, most of the other slide. Oh, I'm missing a slide. I'll have to wing it here. I'm so sorry. The other part of our hand that we can hold is our palm. And our center palm brings us back to center, helps us to connect with who we are, It helps us to be grounded. And it just fuels all the functions in our bodies. If you think about it, all the functions in our body energetically, we know this through reflexology and acupuncture, they all go through and have relationships with our fingers. Well, there's another relationship of the more refined energy that goes through our palm to help feed those energies. So when we're holding our palm, we're helping everything in our body and helping us to be calm. I was sharing this with someone recently um, and saying how this can help to ease your nerves and I know that some people view the palm as the magic spot because it does help us calm. It also has to do with the solar plexus, which also has to do with security and just being in ourselves. So these are some wonderful gifts that we have in our hands. And when I am working as a complementary therapist, I work with these energies and I support you to feel better and to transform your stress into serenity. And it also empowers you because not only can you have your energies harmonized and have a nice pampering break, you can also learn how to improve your energy and how to feel better yourself. Self-care is a key element in my life and in the lives of my clients, and I love when they take on board the ways that they can help themselves. So this is just a little introduction and a short break in your day. I'm so glad you've joined me, and thank you for supporting me. Now, if you'd like the replay on this, I can send it out to you. Let me know. And I also have some added tips for you. And this is where you can find me. I'm in Ireland and I have a practice there. I also help people online. So you have a phone number, a website. I also have input on social media and on YouTube. And actually this month I'm running a series of very short tips for 30 days to help ease stress and tension. And those are for those of us who have this in our lives in general. But the timing of this is prompted for those in Ireland who are 
entering the exam cycle. Because if you're watching this and you're stressed or anxious or you know someone in your life who is, it's an added resource, another tool that you can add into your pack. So I hope you've enjoyed this and I'd love to hear from you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks so much.